Thank you. I had only heard that song on a recording. And to hear it sung by the choir, it's even more beautiful. So thank you. Well, good morning. Whether you are here in person or you're joining us online, it is always so good to have you with us each and every Sunday. You know, we are going to continue on our Advent journey. We are in the second week of Advent. For those of you who may not know me, I'm Dawn Hauser. I'm the pastor here at Aiken United Methodist Church. If you're worshiping with us online, you may want to prepare your two candles amongst your four candles so that you're prepared to light your candles as we light our Advent candles here in the sanctuary. In our Advent series this year, we are slowing things down just a little bit during the beginning of our worship service. It's often such a full time of year. And so as we make it our purpose to see Christ reflected all around us, we intentionally are going to create this time of slow motion to train our hearts to see more deeply. Today we are going to turn on the portrait settings in our imagination so we might focus more clearly on the light of love projecting itself as Christ in the people who are all around us and in and through us. I invite you to get real comfortable in your seats. So get real comfortable. Maybe you want to put both feet on the floor right where you're standing and perhaps you just kind of loosen up a little bit. I want to invite you to open your hands upward on your lap. This is going to be a true, true exercise because I'm going to be honest with you. If I was sitting out there, this would be really difficult for me because I have to see everything that's going on around me. So I want you, if it's at all possible, to close your eyes. Take a deep, deep breath in and out. If it is difficult for you to get your mind to quiet down, if you have many, many things that are vying for your attention, it's okay. Don't judge that. Just take another deep breath and thank and excuse for just a moment the tasks that might be popping up on that to-do list in your brain. That's it. Take time to settle in. Bring to your mind's eye, to your imagination, a very familiar person's face, someone that you love dearly. What is it about them that just warms your heart. Imagine particles of light emanating from them and let your memory move to an encounter when you felt this love and light extended from them to you. Now imagine the refracted light showering them as if a prison has just lit up the surface of the walls and their own skin. As you see this scene, let your face, let their face fade and let it change. And in their place for just a moment, see someone whom you struggle to love or someone you've seen but you do not know very well. If you can, let the same reflection of light emanate and shower this person. Let it be an anointing of love on this person, made possible because Christ's light is the gift that we all have to give, whether we feel able to or not. Continue to just breathe, listen, and see with your heart. Upon this moment, upon this people, upon this place, the holy comes and sacred knowing 
offspring sacred being for sacred doing of God's plan. Take one more deep breath and open your eyes slowly. As you are ready, I invite you to stand in body or spirit. For those worshiping online, you are invited to light your first and second candles with us. At this time, I'd like to invite Annette and Caitlin to come and prepare for the lighting of our Advent candle. You will find the words for our responsive reading are located on the screen. And Annette will read the italicized words if you would respond with the bolded words. Please stand as you are able. We'll be lighting the candle of love. We pray for love this day. We pray for love this day. We open to see the sacred reflected in all things. We open to see the sacred reflected in all things. We open to see each person. We open to see each person. As a gift of holy presence. As a gift of holy presence. This is the gift of the Christ mystery. This is the gift of the Christ mystery. Lighting the way of love. Lighting the way to love. Upon this moment, upon this people, upon this place, the holy comes. The sacred knowing brings sacred being for sacred doing of God's plan. Please sing the opening song, Advent song, verses 1 and 2. Please remain standing as you are able and read together with me our opening prayer. You will find the words are written in your bulletin as well as on the screen. Let's pray together. Living God, Christ mystery, spirit of love, we give you thanks for this holy gathering of beloveds. As we take in the love you offer, may we be a reflection of your light expanding the sacred presence you have promised into the sacred presence we can offer. Amen. Please be seated. Well, when we look through the lens of the sacred, we prepare our senses to recognize the holy in all people, to come to know them in a steadfast and encouraging way. Our world is crying out for harmony and being able to see the Christ reflected in each other makes a path for this to be accomplished. We are inspired this week to see our own walk upon this earth as part of the call to be sacred people 
who usher in the presence of love. Hear this first reading as Bob shares it with us today. Good morning. I know I don't look like my wife, Sharon. <laughs> and she has uh, got the flu this morning. We tested for COVID and she doesn't have that, but she is, uh, pardon the terms, sicker than a dog. And she asked if I would help out. I didn't realize how busy she was. <laughs> First of all, we're supposed to greet you people. So a big hi to hey from the uh, lakes. And welcome to the United Methodist Church here in Aiken. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to rub elbows, shake paws, or the traditional greeting. Our reading today is uh, Romans verses 5 through 13 from the good book. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction so that they by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope may the god of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus so that together you may have one voice glorify the god and the father our lord Jesus Christ we welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God, for I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God in order that he might confirm the promises given to the patriarchs. And... <clears throat> in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written, therefore I will confess you among the Gentiles to sing praises to your name. And again he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let the peoples praise him. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles. In him the Gentiles shall hope. May the God of hope fill you with all the love and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thus ends the reading. Thank you, Bob. Well, I'd like to invite you to please sing with me hymn number 204 from the United Methodist hymnal, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. I'd like to share with you this morning the gospel reading and the gospel reading comes from the book of Matthew chapter 3 and it's verses 1 through 12 and it reads like this 
For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another, in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God, in order that he might confirm the promises given to the ancestors, and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy as it is written. Therefore, I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. And again, he says, rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him. And again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse shall come. The one who rises to rule the Gentiles, in him the Gentiles shall hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Thanks be to God. Excuse me. Did you just read what I read? I probably did. We need to cover one through twelve. We I read Matthew. I read the Gospel of Matthew. Did you read the epistle was I, I read Romans. You read Romans. Identical. <laughs> Sounds identical, right? Thank you, Bob. Bob just completed my sermon for me. <laughs> Oh, they sound so much alike, don't they? Wow. Even Isaiah proclaimed that the Messiah would come for the Gentiles. What amazing good news. Even though that baby that was born and laid in the manger was Jewish, he was not born only for the Jewish people. The Messiah was born for all of humanity. So I have a confession to make. My sermon last week, not good. <laughs> not good. I was sick. I said, at least I gave a message. It might not have been good. But there were parts of the sermon that I missed last week, and I'm going to kind of incorporate them in today because it's important. Part of last week's sermon should have been about creation. It should have been about that original story that we read in the first chapter of Genesis that talks about creation and that God is in creation. God just didn't create. God infused God into creation. I have been reading Richard Rohr's book, The Universal Christ. And I have to tell you, I had to go and look to make sure that Richard Rohr isn't of Native American ancestry because he speaks like he's of Native American ancestry, and he's not. What I discovered is that the... The spirituality of my people, of my indigenous people, is the foundation of Christianity. Because one thing, one thread that flows through all of humanity is that God is in everything. Everything that is created contains the DNA of God. Richard Rohr writes in his book, The Universal Christ, God love things, loves things by becoming them. God became this world. Everything in our world contains God. 
whether it's human beings, plants, animals, the water, every bit of it contains the DNA of God. The incarnation of God in Jesus. We always think of incarnation and we put it in this nice, neat little box that the incarnation of God is Jesus. But the incarnation is so much more than just Jesus. The incarnation of God rests within each and every one of us because we all carry the DNA of God because God created us. Sometimes I think we forget that. I think we forget that that annoying bee that wants to get into our soda can in the summer is the incarnation of God. I have found myself in the last few years, I hate snakes and I hate, I don't want to say bugs, but I hate spiders in particular. I have found myself when I find these spiders in the bathroom downstairs not killing them, where once I would just stomp on them and wipe them up with a piece of toilet paper or tissue or something and flush it down the toilet. I don't do that anymore because they are the incarnation of God. They are part of creation, and they are here for a purpose. Although they are annoying and gross to me, the same with the snakes. If I'm out in the woods, I'm not going to take a shovel and kill them because they are the incarnation of God. I have found myself... In the, in the last probably eight or ten years, discovering creation in a new way, in a new light. And what it has done, it has given me an opportunity to be in creation, but to begin to look inward, begin to look at myself, begin to realize that I too carry the DNA of God, and yet I am flawed. Although I have good qualities, I also have a shadow side of me. And that is the way it is for all of humanity. We have a good side and we have a shadow side. And with the good comes the shadow. And here is the biggest part of this that I have learned. The, the larger your light, the longer the shadow is that you cast. And so we have to be careful as disciples of Jesus Christ as we begin to realize that the incarnation of God is inside of each of us and we light the world that our light has a long shadow too. We have to be aware of that. As we think about this world that we live in, it is filled with division. This passage of, these two passages of scripture, I think to myself, my goodness, we need to put those on the mirror in the bathroom. We need to read them every day, right? Because there's an important message there. It's about unity. It's about coming together. It's about loving each other. In the beginning of our service, we slowed things down and we thought about, we envisioned that person whom we love so much, right? We have this vision of these people. For some of us, it might have been a grandchild, maybe a parent, maybe who not, you know, a good friend, whoever it may have been, maybe our spouse. We had this vision of this person who we love. It's easy to love them. But then to have to trade that vision with someone who maybe we don't know so well or somebody that is really difficult to get along with because we do have folks like that in our lives, right? Some of us, they're our own relatives. We're dreading Christmas, right? Because it's like, oh, good grief, I gotta sit with Uncle Fred and I don't wanna deal with him, right? We have to trade that image of the person who we shower with love for someone who it's a little more difficult to love them. And as we trade that image, what is it about them 
that makes it difficult for us to love them. For a long time, I would say often about someone I would encounter that was maybe a little more difficult. Maybe it was just somebody crabby when I went to pay for my gas. There's a story behind every human being, right? There's a reason that that person is crabby. I don't know why they're crabby, but I know that there's a story there. There's a story behind every person. And I think one of the things that we are discovering in our Christian walk, in our, our journey as disciples of Jesus Christ, is that it is easy for us to dismiss those people who are difficult and who we do not like. I often say God commands us to love. doesn't mean we have to like them, but we do have to love them. The sacredness in every human being, whether we like them or dislike them, is this. They carry the DNA of God. And we as disciples, we as Christian followers in the western part of the world have forgotten the DNA of God in every human being. We may not like the way that somebody lives. We may not like the fact that somebody is a member of the LGBTQ community. We may not like or have a fear of someone who looks different than us, who maybe comes from another part of the world, who whatever the reasons are, the reality of it is, is that they carry the DNA of God. And because of that, we love them. Now, one of the people in your life that may be the hardest person for you to love is yourself. We live in a culture in the western part of this world that has taught us to be so hard on ourselves. To think about all, to dwell on all of the things that we've done wrong in life. If I did that, I'd have to be at the grace unit, right? Of course we've done things wrong in our life. We're sinful creatures. But, but, there's goodness. There's goodness in all of us. And the goodness is what we should be dwelling on. I've spent a lot of time in the last few years thinking and exploring the division between the Eastern Christian Church and the Western Christian Church. And one of the things that happened along the way in that division was that the Western Christian Church left behind the mystery of God. We know about all those mystics, and we know how connected they were to God. We know how the people love one another. We have forgotten that in the United States. Whether it's the United Methodist Church, the Baptist Church, the Catholic Church, the Lutherans, I don't care who you are. If you are a disciple of Jesus Christ, and whatever label you worship under, we have forgotten the fact that God is mystery, and we need to embrace it. And in the mystery of God is love for one another. I don't know what's happened here, but somewhere along the line, we have really dropped the ball in the Western church. We have not made disciples of Jesus Christ. We've made disciples of Christian nationalism. We've done that quite well. But we have not made disciples of Jesus Christ. Jesus came into this world not to teach us how to be spiritual beings. We are already spiritual beings. We were born to be spiritual beings. Jesus was born to teach us how to be human because we don't do that so well. Jesus taught us how to be human beings. This is the lesson. That is the lesson that we take away 
from Jesus. I want to end by talking a little bit about the cross. You know, we spend so much time dwelling this time of year on the birth of Jesus, the birth and the life of Jesus, and that's great. But sometimes we forget about the cross. And one of the things about the cross that we have done is we've made it a gateway into heaven. Instead of us staring at the crucified Jesus, and instead of us taking in the suffering and transferring the suffering onto God's people and realizing that God's people in this world are suffering and remembering that, we make the cross out to be a gateway to heaven. Let's worry about living on this earth. That's what Jesus wanted us to do. That was the purpose in Jesus' birth and life. It wasn't just about his death. It was about learning how to be human beings and learning how to suffer with one another. Because when we suffer, as much as we don't like it and we don't like to be uncomfortable, I'll be the first to raise my hand, I hate to be uncomfortable. As much as we don't like it, we know that the portal to the great mystery to God is oftentimes through suffering. And we know that we can have empathy for those who suffer. And we know that we can show love, God's love, to those who are suffering in the world around us. And so I want us to remember not just that the cross is the gateway to eternal life, but the cross is also a vision of how we live today, how we live in this world, how we treat one another, how do we love one another. It's not easy. It isn't easy. And I don't think it was intended to be easy, but it is the lesson that we must learn. And we must remember that our God is a great mystery. We have to learn to embrace the mystery in all of it. How could God's DNA be in every one of us? How could that be? And yet it is. It is in everything. God's DNA is in virtually everything. Amen.
Well, first of all, I want to say to all of you, I know many of you were praying for me and for Millard. We were both sick with COVID. And all I have to say is I offer a prayer of thanksgiving to God who has given scientists and doctors the ability to treat this terrible, terrible pandemic that has come to being. It is not just like the normal typical cold. It is much worse than a normal cold. And I just offer a prayer of thanksgiving for vaccines, for medications, and, and just the ability to be able to treat people when they become sick with COVID. And so, but amongst all of that, I am very thankful for all of your prayers because I know some of you were, were praying praying for us, so thank you. Thankfully, the only two that got sick with COVID in our household is Millard and I. The only reason I got sick is because I sleep with him. <laughs> and he breathed on me. I thought that darn CPAP machine would filter all that out, but it didn't. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, well, one of the many ways that we reflect God's love is to offer prayers for those who are in need for our family, our friends, our neighbors, and for the world. Each week we set aside this time in our worship service to offer our collective prayers. I invite you to respond with the words, hear our prayer. When you hear the words, come, Lord Jesus, let us pray. Mighty God, hear the intercessions that we offer for all people in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless and extend the church of your Son, our Savior. Inspire all ministers and elders in your church that they may be diligent in tending and feeding your flock and always handle with reverence your holy things, the sacraments instituted by our Lord Jesus Christ. Sustain all who serve you in isolation, from the communion of a congregation of believers, that they may lead many of your wandering children into a fold of Christ the Good Shepherd. We pray for those in the fiery furnace of persecution, that like the faithful Hebrews, they may know the presence of the Son of God and be saved alive from their trials. We especially pray, Lord God, for all of the newly elected bishops in the United Methodist Church. We pray that you would indwell them, that they would lead your church in your will. We pray that you would bolster them and give them energy and courage and wisdom during these difficult times. Come, Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. First creator, by your love we are given children through the miracle of birth. May we greet each new child with joy and surround them with faith so they may know who you are and want to be disciples of Jesus Christ. Remind us never to neglect our children, either physically or spiritually, but show them the loving acceptance that was the model given us by Jesus himself. Bless every agency that seeks to serve children, especially those children who have been abused. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Loving Christ, send your healing spirit to the sick in body, mind, or spirit, renewing them in strength and in the trust that your power will keep them in your care, that in life and in death, Underneath are the everlasting arms. We especially pray for those whom we now hold in the silences of our hearts. Come, Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we give thanks for all your saints who on earth confessed your name and who are now recognized in heaven as your children by their perfect brother, Jesus Christ. In communion with our brothers and sisters who have passed from our sight, may we be kept 
from falling and stand without blemish in the presence of your glory with rejoicing to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and to the Holy Spirit be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time, now and forever. Amen. Well, you know, as disciples of Jesus Christ, we extend our love to, we extend God's love to our neighbors by offering healing, hope, and Jesus to those who live around us. We often do this, do this through the ministries of the church. The church relies on the contributions of everyone to offer ministry to those who are in need. Our contributions are the gifts of ourselves, time and talent, as well as our financial gifts. I'd like to invite you to partner with us here at Aiken United Methodist Church to offer healing and hope to the world around us. If you're worshiping with us online, you will find the information for online giving is located in the description of this video. And if you're here in person in the sanctuary, you will find that there are some wooden boxes in the back of the sanctuary, and you are invited to leave your offering in those boxes, and someone will care for them after the service. Please stand as you are able, and if you would sing with us the Advent doxology, the words are sung to the tune of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, and you will find the words written on the screen as well as in your bulletin. Let us pray and ask God to bless the gifts we have received. We thank you, holy God, that your love is greater than our sin, your compassion stronger than our fear. May these gifts given in your name be signs, bold reminders, that all that we have is yours. Use our gifts to grow your kingdom here on earth. In the name of the Christ we pray, amen. Well, we are going to enter into a time of communion as we come to the Lord's table. I'd like to invite you to remain standing as you are able. And if you would sing with me number 242 in the United Methodist Hymnal, Love Came Down at Christmas as we prepare our hearts to come to the Lord's table. Hear me. There. Better? 
I got a thumbs up and I got a better, so we're doing good. I have to tell you, it's a miracle that we have communion elements today because I still am suffering with COVID brain. And what I was thinking, I came over here yesterday to make sure the sanctuary was all ready and never thought to get bread and grape juice ready. And so there I was this morning at 20 to 10, running around trying to figure it out. Thank goodness we had a loaf of bread at home. <laughs> so, so God always provides, right? So you will find our communion liturgy is located on the screen as well as in your bulletin. And I invite you to remain standing for just a little bit longer. Christ invites to his table all who love him. For Christ is reflected in everything, in all of the things that unite us. Christ is there. There is a place for you, too. This cosmic banquet of love is set for a hungry and a hurting world. When we take in and take on Christ, we are the body of Christ sent forth into the world to lay a banquet of love wherever we find ourselves. Let us open ourselves so that our hearts might be filled completely. Please confess with me. You will find the words written on the screen. Maker and lover of all, forgive us when we are too preoccupied, self-involved, or worried to notice your presence in our lives. When we are too rushed to allow moments of wonder and awe that lead to hope, when we are too frightened to imagine those not like us loved equally by you, when we gloss over the most ordinary details as a revelation of your joy, when we fail to stop and reside in peace with you in our depths, open us, O oh God, free us to reflect the sacred. Touch us with your presence, we pray in your holy name. Christ anointed one. Amen. Hear this good news. God is with us in our distress and in our faltering. God is always and already closing the gaps we create. Jesus calls us to this table with unfailing and gracious hospitality. You are forgiven and freed. You are not alone. You are forgiven and freed. You are not alone. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Please be seated. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Word of God, Logos, from the beginning. You made us reflective of your image and set us ablaze with the breath of life. When we turned away and our love dulled, your love remained as light for our lives. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth, and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Praise God, praise God of power and might. Praise God whose presence shines through our night. Praise God of glory, Hosanna's sing, reflecting the sacred story. This, this is Christ the one who mirrors love for all of us. Haste, haste to bring him love the word of time eternal. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick fed the hungry, and ate with sinners, a reflection of his purpose, and anointed as his disciples, 
Christ's birth is an awakening. Christ's death and resurrection is the pattern of all things. We are his body in the world, the body of Christ, renewed by water and the Spirit. He has been, is, and always will be with us. One in three, three in one, in the power of your word and Holy Spirit, on the night in which he gave himself up for you. He took, well, first he started with the bread, not, not this uh, wine, but he started with the bread, and he asked God to bless it. And then he passed it to his disciples, and he said to them, take and eat this. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then, after the supper was over, then he took the cup, and he gave thanks to God for the cup. And he gave it to his disciples and he said to them, drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And as often as you drink it, remember me. And so in remembrance of his mighty acts, we offer ourselves as a holy and a living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Anoint this community with your Holy Spirit and pour out your spirit on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them a reflection of your life and love, love for the world, so that we may be for the world a Christ mirror, radiating and multiplying this love in the world. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in mystery to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at the heavenly banquet forever. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. This is the Christ, the one who mirrors love for all of us. Haste, haste to bring him love, the word of time eternal. Because... There is one loaf. We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ, the cup of forgiveness. In the United Methodist Church, we practice an open communion table. This table is extended to all, and the love that gathers around this table is extended to all. All who love Jesus Christ and follow his way are welcome at this table. At this time, I'd like to invite our ushers and our communion steward to come and prepare to share this great mystery, this great meal with all of you. Mr. Lake is going to have the bread, and I will have the cup. We're going to trade places here, and I'm going to invite you to come. Come and partake in the love that God offers to all.
too many things to do up here. You know, it's always wonderful to come to the Lord's table and to be present with all of you. And I'm always, always reminded that as we gather around the Lord's table, we are here with that great cloud of witnesses, those who have gone before us and those who are yet to come all gather, and it's the mystery in the Lord's table that sometimes is so heartwarming to me because it is Jesus that is here who brings us all together, those who have gone before us to know their presence is here is sometimes an overwhelming and heartfelt joy that wells up inside of me. I'd like to invite you to pray with me our closing prayer. God of grace, you renew us at your table with the bread of life. May this food strengthen us in love and help us to serve you in each other. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. Well, when you see the lights twinkling, when you can, you know what, let me back up here. I got to tell you a story. Millard and I have been grumbling about Christmas trees for a week. We don't want to do them. Last night, yesterday, I put the Christmas tree up in the house. Usually I have that thing loaded with lights. It's a pre-lit tree. I said, I think this year it's fine just the way it is. We'll just let the white pre-lit lights be, and that's good enough. He said, no, I really like the colored lights. I begrudgingly put the colored lights on there. But I said to him yesterday, when we were grumbling about Christmas trees before the Christmas tree endeavor started, I said, you know, I was prompted while I was getting ready and reminded that the Christmas trees are a reminder of Christ's light in the world. And we are living in a hurting world where people need to see the light. They need to see the light of Christ, even if it's in a Christmas tree. And so... I stopped grumbling about putting Christmas trees up because I know that that light is important for so many people who are living in a dark world. The light that we emanate to others is important. So when you see the twinkle, when you catch a reflection in a mirror, when you notice the sunlight, because it's beautiful today, right? When we notice the sunlight dancing on a surface or a nightlight glowing in the darkness, let these be signs that the Christ light is revealed again and again and again and throughout this world. Know that your brilliant presence is pouring more hope out into a weary world. God loved us by becoming us. This means that you are already reflecting the sacred. In the name of the Creator Christ and Spirit of Hope, amen. Go in peace to share the light and the love of Jesus Christ with the world. Please stand as you are able and sing with me number 202 from the United Methodist Hymnal, People Look East. <laughs> Thank you.
bodies to share the light and the love of Jesus Christ with the world. Amen. Thank you.